their neighbor because somebody went to the shrine and died in the offering. If one person can do that, then one person can come to the altar and release everybody. For your sake tonight, your brother in Lagos, the one in Abuja, the one in Port Harcourt, the one in the village, the one in Japan, the one in China, the one in Malaysia, the one in South Africa, wherever they are, heaven is about to locate them tonight. For your sake, heaven is visiting them tonight. Let's get into this business so that we can mess up that devil a little tonight. Number 17. Take up your Bible while you stand. I want to also believe that you bought you bought something like a wine or soft drink. If you don't have, go and look for your own now. Because this night, tonight is Passover. Go and look for one. No, don't look. Don't use water. We have dealt with water. We have dealt with water. Tonight is blood. Tomorrow is the spirit, the oil. Let us see that devil that is deaf and dumb that cannot hear. Numbers 17. We we'll read from verse 1 to verse 4. Numbers 17. From verse 1 to verse 4. Please follow me because tonight somebody will be separated from a circle of affliction that your family has been going through. The Lord said to Moses, bring it from King James Version. Get King James Version, leave NIV, good. Speak unto the children of Israel and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers. According to the house of what? Their fathers. Of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. Verse 3. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. Then verse 4. I want you to take notes. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet. We meet with who? Where God will meet with who? It will shock you to look at that passage and you discover that they are dropping somebody's name on the altar for God to have a meeting. They drop the name and go home while a meeting takes place. Tonight, as your name stays here overnight, as you sleep this night, heaven will conduct a meeting over your case. This is where they copied taking somebody's name to a shrine. Because there is a meeting that takes place there. There are two things that represent you at the altar. Your name and your blood. Your name and your blood. And tonight we are bringing both the name and the blood. And hear me, somebody, I feel so happy. Very happy tonight because someone they say cannot be anything. Your history will be changed this night. Somebody's hand labor will dissolve tonight. Amen. Let me hear you shout a better amen. amen. Let's read one more scripture and then you will sit down. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. We we'll read from verse 21 to verse 24. Exodus chapter 12. Movement of the people. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 to 24. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take a lamb 
according to your families according to what the first one was the name of your families this one again is according to your families and kill the passover next verse 22 and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning for the lord will pass through to smite the egyptians and when he seared the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts the lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you finally verse 24 and you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever somebody say amen, amen. father by your blood we receive access even to your presence even to the holy of holies tonight by the blood we pass over the land of captivity tonight we recover all the years the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm has eaten tonight we get into the journey of entering our promised land do what no man can do in the name of jesus we pray yeah. somebody shout a better amen yeah. please take your seats i speak to us tonight on just a very simple topic by the blood by the blood somebody say the blood of jesus now listen after tonight you need to understand that just saying the blood of jesus settles some settles matters for you the currency of the altar is blood if you go to the shop you buy with naira if you come to the altar you buy with blood that blood is represented in the name of jesus that is the power of attorney given to us now the bible says and god said to moses write the name of the people of israel tell them let the head of every family bring a rod and write their name on their rod yeah hear me today what is the rod every head of a family handles a rod a rod you can call a staff is a walking stick made from almond tree you don't use any other tree except almond almond seed is one of those things you use to treat cancer now it's a very special breed of plants that god created and he said let the head of every family bring their rod and when you bring their rod carve their name on that rod and he gave an example for the tribe of levi aaron is the head write aaron's name upon the rod of the tribe of levi of course you should know that the 12 tribes of israel were from 12 families are you with me tonight now and he said to them write the rod why the rod the rod is the symbol of authority of any family anybody with the rod is the controller of the destiny of that family men will always have meetings at the gate elders have meetings at the gate in the book of psalm david shouted one day and cried he said they are making a mockery of me at the gate and drunkards are laughing at me elders have their meeting at the gate in the book of lamentations chapter 7 chapter 5 rather the bible says that elders have left the gates and they have left their position of checking what is coming in and what is going out elders come to meet at the gate and when they come they must come with the rod the rod is the authority 
of that family. Anyone with the rod is the one who declares it and every other person accepts it, whether you like it or not. Anyone with the rod is the one who stays and no decision is taken until he has given his own. Anyone with the rod is the one who controls the influence, who they will go to consult to be on their side for a matter to come out. The rod is important. When they come to the meeting, every father, the elder of the family, will come with his rod. Whether he's old, whether he's young, he comes with the rod. And once you have the rod, you have the authority to sit. And whatever you say in that meeting, everybody in your lineage, everybody in your family submits to what you have spoken. That is to say that the people you don't like, you can mess up. The people you like, you can help. Now, if for any reason the man is old and is sick, cannot come for the meeting, he will send his prince and the prince will come with the rod. As he comes to the, with the rod to the meeting and he sits there, the elders will look at him and say, you are too young to attend this meeting. Where is your father? He will say, my father is not able to come. I have his rod. The moment he presents the rod, they tell him, that is all right. Sit down with us, whatever you say. For your family, we will take. God is handing a rod over to somebody here tonight. The rod, anywhere it is, shows you that authority is in place. If you enter the church where a bishop is presiding, you will discover that as the bishop is coming into the church, somebody is carrying a rod in front of him, a rod with the head of a shepherd's stick. And that rod goes before the bishop, and the bishop is coming behind, and when they come, they go to the altar and rest that rod. It tells you that a bishop is seated and his word is final the rod when you come to the house of assembly a house of assembly cannot sit without the rod that is why when every member of the house of assembly is seated and the speaker is about to come in somebody will call, carry what they call a mace that mace is the rod of the speaker and it takes it and as he's coming, the speaker will come behind him. The speaker will climb and sit on his chair and they bring the rod and rest it in front of him. Anytime there is crisis, they first of all go and remove it because anybody who grabs that rod has messed up the sitting for that day. The rod. No wonder David declared, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me because I am in possession of them. And then suddenly, Moses began a journey. He began a journey and then met a bush, tree that was burning and there was nothing burning inside it. There were flames. There was fire, but the tree was not burning. And he said, what kind of thing is this? And then he came there and then a voice came to him and said, don't come nearer because where you are standing is a holy ground. Remove what is on your feet. And then he stopped and he said, I have heard the cry of my people. I need you to go back and release them. I want to tell somebody here this night, heaven has heard your cry. No, I'm not talking to everybody now. I am addressing someone here. You have asked questions. What is happening to me? How long will I remain like this? I am here to tell you tonight. Heaven has heard your cry. Weep no more. For the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open your fire. This night, by the blood, heaven shall remember you. I have heard the cry. And then he said to Moses, Go! And tell Pharaoh to leave my people. Let them go. And Moses said, I cannot go to 
these people just like that. If I go and tell Israel that God sent me to come and deliver them, they will ask me, who sent you? Because in the land of Egypt, every altar has a name. And every God has a name. If I am coming from one God, who do I say sent me? God, show me your ID card. What is your identity? And God said to him, when you get there, tell them, I am that I am. A he, a shah, a he has sent you. Anything they want, I am that. If they look for money, I provide money. If they are sick, I give them healing. If they are bound, I give them deliverance. Whatever they want, I am that. I am that I am. Anything you can think of, I am that thing. God is bigger than your problem. God is bigger than the witch that is challenging you. Listen, the person that is challenging you, only typhoid can keep him down. He said, I am. God is bigger than life. He is not life. He is bigger than life. Life came out of him. You don't bring God into existence. I told them somewhere, I said, God does not exist. They started looking at me. But for something to exist, it has a beginning. It started from one time and stopped at one time. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. That means the life that started, started from inside of him. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. So if you're looking for life, I just need to tell you, take from inside of me. And they came to him and said, Lazarus, your friend is dead. And Jesus said to them, no, he is sleep, sleeping. Let us go and wake him up. And Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus. And he said, Father, that you may be glorified. I know that you hear me. And he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. Do you know why he had to shout Lazarus? Because a lot of dead people were around. And if he said, come out, all dead men will rise. Because life was talking. He had to call one person. He wanted, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus got up inside the grave. Because life was talking. I am that I am. Your case is not bigger than I am. If he says, all you dead men wake up. It will be a serious mistake. But because he knew the particular one he wanted to come out. He said, Lazarus, come. And he started coming. I am that I am. Go and tell them. And Moses and Aaron entered the house of Pharaoh. And said, my God said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, which God? Do you know how many gods I have in Egypt? I don't know you. I don't know your God. Show me what your God can do. I and Moses was wondering what to do. And God said, tell Aaron to bring that his rod. He brought the rod. The rod that was picked up from the altar. Because when all Israel dropped their rods, the rod of Aaron bordered. He said, Aaron, I have chosen. He said, take that rod. Drop it on the ground. He dropped it on the ground. He became a snake. Ah, Pharaoh laughed. This one is small boy magic. I know what we can do. The Bible says, he sent for his magicians. And his sorcerers. Listen, the people he brought 
were not just small boys. They were the high priests of all the altars in Egypt. The ten plagues were targeted at ten altars and the ten gods of Egypt. I don't have all the time here to tell you the ten gods of Egypt. Starting from the river Nile to Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh was a god represented by his son. That was the last one. Pharaoh has an altar in front of his palace where people come and drop sacrifice. Just like they drop for a shrine. Pharaoh was shrine himself. He said, all of you come out. And they came out. No magician can operate without his rod. That was his power. If you have watched this Harry Potter, you will discover he can't do anything until the rod is in his hands. If you, a lot of these occultic men that they make chiefs, they give them staff. Some of them, you see elephant tusks, short ones, some tall ones. Those things are not normal though. When they killed their principality in Anambra State, all of them started returning their staff. He said, all of you come and show Moses the kind of God we have in Egypt. And all of them came with their rods. And they dropped their own rods. My friend, they were not dropping their rods. They were dropping their authority. And they dropped. This one dropped. From the Nile, he dropped. The one that worships the sun, dropped. The one that worships the skies and the stars, dropped. The one that worships the day and night, dropped. The one that worships the earth, dropped. The one for fertility, dropped. That was the frog. All of them dropped their rods. And it became a snake. And God gave a command to the rod of Moses. He has a banquet for you now. Begin to eat. He swallowed the one from the Nile. Representing fertility and the economy of Egypt. It had to be a snake because their chief was a serpent. That's why on the head of the crown of every pharaoh, you see the head of a cobra. He swallowed that one. Snake does not swallow snake. This one, he had to swallow it. Because it was not about snakes. It was about authority. He swallowed the first one, swallowed the second one, swallowed the third one. They were still looking. He swallowed the fourth one, swallowed the fifth one. The snake was busy swallowing. He swallowed this until all of them were swallowed. And God said to Moses, don't waste time now. Collect it. He bent down and picked up the rod. And the thing became straight as a sick. And he collected it and gave over to Aaron. He said, let us go home. As they were going out, they were going with all the powers, all the authorities, all the altars of Egypt. Tonight, any altar that has swallowed your destiny, any altar that has swallowed your marriage, any altar that has swallowed your destiny, anyone that has swallowed your health, anyone that has swallowed your husband, your wife, your children, anyone that has swallowed your building, anyone that has swallowed your job, Upon this mountain today, heaven shall swallow them. I said they shall be swallowed. I said they shall be swallowed. Somebody shout a better amen. Anyone that comes to you by dream and causes miscarriage, this night they shall be swallowed. Anyone that causes to you by dream and you wake up in the morning, you are sick. This night they shall be swallowed. Anyone that comes by dream and takes you back to where you used to live 10 years ago. Takes you back to primary school. Takes you back to where you left many years ago. This night they shall be swallowed. They shall be swallowed. They shall be swallowed. They shall be swallowed by the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. That was why Moses could sit in his house and give an order. By 
by this time tomorrow, you will not have water to drink. And the priest of River Nile could not do anything because his authority was gone. After tonight, the instruments that they used to oppress you, it could be their office. It could be the connection, the person they know. Whatever that gives them the confidence to oppress you, this night they shall lose it. I said they shall lose it. I said they shall lose it. I said they shall lose it. Somebody is about to collect what belongs to him. Somebody is recovering what belongs to him. This night I announce to you, you will collect your father's own. You will collect your mother's own. You will collect your auntie's own. You will collect your uncle's own. All the years the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer has eaten. They shall be restored. 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 Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. Sit down. Let's finish this thing. They continued from the first. As he left that house, God started dealing with the altars one by one. I don't want to get through the ten of them. If I open your eyes to the ten altars, it will shock you. That he was dealing with the controllers, the principalities of Egypt. But the last one came. And the last one he said... The only thing that can take you out of Egypt is the blood. And he said, that night, gather everybody. Enter your house. Take a lamp and slaughter it. Put the blood in a basin. And then take it and put it on the lintel first. The, thing, the lintel is like this. And then put it on the doorpost here and here. Here, here, and here. That is a sign of the cross. Showing a prophetic presentation of Jesus, of what Jesus was coming to do. And he said, Enter your house that night and then start with the Passover. Because there's a, there's a, an angel, an agent that is about to pass through the land and his job is to destroy his job is to kill he doesn't know face he only knows blood he doesn't know name he only knows blood he said that night take that blood put on the door Go inside and lock. Don't come out. Because another kind of masquerade is passing. He says, stay inside. And then eat the Passover. On living bread and wine. Which was the comedian. And he said, it's the last thing you will eat tonight. And that's why I said, by the time we consecrate it. It's the last thing you're going to eat or drink this night. We are not serving you communion. Communion is under church. Let me not get involved or get into trouble with church leadership. But I am serving you the blood, not communion. He said, when you drink it that night, remain indoors. Because as this agent of death passes, when he sees the blood, he will pass over. Tonight, I don't want to preach much because I want to lead you in prayer by the blood. Because I need you to pray so that by the time you pray, you can be able to have the effect of the blood once it enters your mouth. After this meeting, what you came here with, where is your own? Open it. After this night, it is no longer mort. 
So if you drop it around and you're looking for it, don't say, where is my mouth? You're going to ask, where is my blood? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen to me tonight. Because blood is the currency of altars. That is why when they want to... Listen, no man can deal with you and attack your destiny without blood on the altar. When people want to command power over others, they look for blood. I was preaching in, Port, in Lagos and then suddenly a brother called me who happened to be my friend. He said, my wife has been in labor for two days. They said the third day we will go for surgery. He said, I don't have money for surgery. Please, since you're around, can you come and pray? And I came to the hospital. And then we started praying. We were holding our hands and walking along the corridor of the hospital. In less than 10 minutes, the doctor came out from the delivery room and said, congratulations. The wife had delivered. But he said to the man, please come to the office. Ah. The man said, man of God, please accompany me. When doctor tells you, let us see in the office. You know now. Only for us to enter. And the doctor said, please sir, collect the placenta of your baby and go and dispose it. I said, doctor, with your respect, it is hospital that disposes placenta. How can you tell a man to collect placenta? And the doctor said, who are you? My friend introduced me as his pastor. He said, okay. Thank God you're a man of God. He said, he needs to take it because men now come to the hospital to buy placenta and they use it for sacrifice and for rituals. And when they take it, he said, I don't even guarantee the nurses that are here because a lot of them are agents of such people. And so you see someone, they will take the placenta and go to their altar for rituals. And suddenly a child will start growing and will start some of them will start be becoming sickly and eating the money of the family. Some of them will grow up and become stubborn and useless. Some of them will become a thorn in the flesh of that family. But listen to me. It can't work with you because it is written. The road of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Any hand touching what belongs to you. Any hand of manipulating your family. Any hand that is holding what belongs to your destiny. This night, they shall release it back to you. God is about to do something tonight. An angel will travel to your village. An angel will travel to your compound. An angel will go to your office. An angel will go to your shop. Whatever my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Somebody shout amen. amen. By the blood. By the blood. They are looking for blood. Blood delivers. The blood of Jesus is not just to save you from sin. It is to reply altars for your sake. It's not just to save you from sin. Is to make sure that the person who will stop your promotion does not sit in that office. The blood of Jesus. I don't have to tell you if I get into the analysis of the blood in your system. Do, of course, you should know by now that if you bring out the blood vessels in your body and stretch them, the blood vessels, put them together and stretch them, it's up to 100,000 miles. Do you know that one pint of blood you donate can save three lives? I don't want to get into the red blood cells and I don't have all the time for that tonight. But when one tampers with your blood, he's tampering with your destiny. A young man came, sir, and he said, I want to see pastor after program in Obibo. I want to see pastor. I said, no, pastor has finished program. Go. He said, I am not going. I want to die at his feet. I said, what do you mean? He said, I want to make a confession. After that, I'm going to die. 
Ushers had that one and said, ah, go and tell pastor. The man had to come in. Okay, what is the problem? He knelt down. Sir, look at the problem. I supply blood to occultic altars. I said, uh-uh. How many? The young man said, I work in the lab. Medical lab. When people come to do malaria tests or typhoid, they will take more blood than they need. So take the little sample for the test and take the rest and sell to the occultic altars. Suddenly you hear somebody has slumped. Suddenly. Yes. Anybody who doesn't take care and watch his blood pressure can have problems. But all of them are not cardiac arrest. All of them are altar arrest. Some of them are altar arrest. Suddenly, like that, Piam. Somebody is gone because the blood has been tampered with. Are you sick? This night, that sickness will leave your blood. Yeah. My wife was in hospital, admitted in what 10? UNTH. And I came there, I saw her in the morning squeezing vegetable and bringing out the water into a cup. I said, what kind of concussion is this one again? What are you doing with uh, liquid from vegetable? He said, they said the blood, the, the drugs they were giving her had affected her blood count. They were too strong. So her blood was shortened. And they said she needed a blood transfusion. I said, whose blood would they put there? My wife said, that's why we are waiting for you to come. So that we will know whether to buy or whether you will donate. I said, my wife, what do you say? He said, daddy, anything you say, that's where I am. I said, okay, good. Who is there? Somebody came. Go there and buy me Rabina. Buy me Rabina. They brought Rabina. I stood there. Nurses came and they were looking at me. On that same night, he lifted the cup. And he said, this is my blood. Which was poured out for you. Every time you drink, remember the new covenant. Which I have with you. Drink it in remembrance of me. I said, thank you, Father, as I consecrate this to become your blood. No man drinks your blood and gets through blood shortage. I gave to my wife, I said, drink it three times. When you take your drug, this morning, take a little. In the afternoon, take a little. In the night, finish it. The next morning, let them do another blood count before they do transfusion. The next morning, they came, took sample went to do the blood count and the man said who said this blood is shortened this blood is too much she should donate overnight by his stripes i cause that sickness in your body by the blood it will leave you tonight whether your brother is in the village or in the town as you drink it it will enter him wherever he is Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. This is the prophetic meeting, my friend. Listen, it's not a normal meeting. I don't care. Nobody should challenge you that he's a witch. Because they suck blood. If they are sucking blood this night, you will drink. Sucking and drinking, which one is bigger? So you're a higher witch. Nobody should challenge you. You call yourself a witch. And then, so what? For God's sake, you were sucking malaria, parasite blood. I drank the blood of the only son of the living God. What are you talking about? Receive understanding, my friend. Every time you come to the communion table, it's not to drink something. You are infusing. It is blood transfusion. That 
why they can challenge you because they have brought blood on the altar. But Jesus knew that they will use blood. And that was why he decided to offer his own blood. The most powerful blood on earth, listen to me, is the blood of an unborn baby in the occultic world. The child that has not been born, the blood, they slice the stomach and bring the child out and use it. That is the most powerful. The next one is that of a virgin. But all this cannot compare with the blood of a 33 year old man that sin did not enter his body. That was why when they crucified him on the cross. Because the Bible says, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. He has put blood on the altar as an atonement, as payment for your sin. That was why on that day at the altar of Calvary it was a shrine. Golgotha was a place of skulls where they shed blood. You will be passing there and you will see human skull on this on this side. And they brought him there. He said here my blood will contend with anybody that takes blood to the altar. And suddenly, he brought out the points from where blood needed to come out. I don't have time to explain that. From the head, from the hands, from the rib, from the leg. And all of them came mixed together. The moment that blood dropped on the ground, where man was coming from, there was an earthquake. Darkness came down. And suddenly, the obstacle that stopped man from seeing God, instead of tearing from the bottom where the hand of man will be, it went to where man could not reach. And from there, without a hand to tear it, it tore by itself. And man could have access to come in and say my father my father hear me tonight you will serve my father and my father will hear you yeah. by the blood you are going to declare the blood tonight are you ready to pray tonight yeah. oh my god we need to finish this thing listen to me after this night after this night your dream will show you that something has changed hands yes, sir. are you hearing what i'm saying yes, sir. Yes, sir. whatever blood chicken even the blood of a human being that they have used to attack you it will expire tonight yes. do you know sir that as the angel of death was about to cross, some Egyptians heard it. That something is about to happen. They left their house because they didn't have a lamb to kill. They came to the house of Israelites and said, no, no, no. They said, yes, what do you want? They said, can we stay in your house this night? Enemy coming to the person he's been dealing with to say please cover me anyone who has oppressed your life this night power will change hands yeah. and the bible says as many as entered the house of the israelites they were saved you have the freedom to tell your neighbors Anyone that will come into your house to partake of this this night, the person will be safe. Before we pray, can I also remind you that after taking it, God told them, any Egyptian you know his house, go and collect your salary. All your salary for 430 years. After the Passover, they started visiting 
the Egyptians. Those who were wise were going to the rich ones. They will knock. Bam, bam. Yes. I want gold. No negotiation. Madam, bring all your gold. Look at it. Silver. Bring all the silver. Israel, in one night, collected their salary for 430 years. This night, you will collect four generations. Whether the people are dead or alive, everything that was collected from your ancestry, you are taking it back this night. Let me hear somebody shout a better amen. Oh, shout Everybody stand on your feet. Let's just pray. Lift up your hand and declare. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I receive clearance. From the sins of my father's house. I will not pay any debt. Incured by my ancestry. Let the blood of Jesus silence the voice of any covenant, of any sacrifice in my bloodline. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I will not pay a sin I did not commit. Every voice of covenant in my bloodline by the blood of Jesus. I silence you. Open your mouth and pray. I silence you. Speak no more. Speak no more. Speak no more. You cannot speak again. Yes. 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 By the blood. Every family cause. Every family cause. I attack you. The blood is against you. You cannot hold me down. The blood is against you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Genesis chapter four verse ten. Genesis chapter four verse ten. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. You are going to release and pray. Lift up that name. Lift up your paper. Lift up your hand and declare. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cry out for me. Anywhere I cannot enter. Anywhere I cannot speak, let the blood of Jesus speak for me, speak for my family, speak for my business. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let the blood of Jesus cry out from the ground. Let it speak. Let the blood open your mouth and pray. Let the blood cry out for me. Where I cannot enter. Where I cannot meet. Where they push me away. May the blood speak for me. May the blood speak for me. Hey, the blood is speaking. The blood is flowing. The blood is flowing. In Batata to La crotesi kada hasha Petesi and the telebose Ah the blood is speaking the blood is speaking the blood is speaking in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus number four Exodus chapter twelve verse twenty two and twenty three Exodus chapter 12 verse 22 and 23. 
And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he see the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. Lift up that paper and declare in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus tonight, I declare, let the blood of Jesus Christ block and destroy every destroyer in my life, in my marriage, in my family, in my ministry, in my career, in my health. Let the assignment of every evil spirit of every evil agent be terminated forever by the blood by the blood by the blood open your mouth and pray let the destroyer be destroyed let that agent be destroyed every witch every wizard every altar Catch fire. The blood is against you. Blood. Blood for blood. Blood for blood. The blood is against you. Every destroyer be destroyed. You destroyer be destroyed. You destroyer be destroyed. Barado Shatalagosian. Yes, the blood is speaking. My God, my Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 26. Isaiah 49, verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood. As if they are drinking sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, I am thy Savior. And thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Lift up your hand and declare by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let every demonic arrow against me return back to the source. May their charms backfire. May they eat their troubles. Let the blood of Jesus reply them tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. By the blood. By the blood. I return their arrows. I return their incantations. By the blood. I return. Let them backfire. They will eat of their own flesh. Let them drink of their own blood. What are you waiting for? Begin to drink your own blood. It's against you. You will not suck my blood. You will not drink my blood. You will not shed my blood. By your blood, you cross principalities. There is power in this house. Hey! My God, my Father. Number six. In 
the name of Jesus. John chapter 6. Healing is about to take place now. Any evil spirit in your body is about to leave you now. Whatever that is moving around, crawling around your body, is about to leave. If you feel like vomiting, you are going to go out and vomit. Something is about to leave you now. This night you go to toilet and pass out things tonight. John chapter 6. We we'll read verse 55 to verse 57. For my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living father has sent me and I live by the father. So he that eateth me even he I lift up your hand and declare in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus I receive full life for my body, for my business, for my family, for my children. I receive my healing right now. I secure freedom from every affliction in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. By the blood, I receive my healing now. I receive my healing now. Hey! For by his stripes we are healed. I receive my healing. Never again. Open your mouth and pray. Touch your body where you are sick. Command that sickness. Come out. Come out. By the blood. By the blood. Come out. Come out by the blood, by the blood. I am free, I am healed, I am healed by the blood. HIV, come out. Diabetes, come out. Ulcer, come out. Every sickness in the eye, in the nose. In the mouth, in the head, you lump, come out, begin to melt, you fibroid, the blood is against you, I command you, melt, melt, dissolve, flow out, in the name of Jesus, the blood is against you. Every sickness in the blood, every poison, every sickness in the bone, every sickness in the stomach, in the chest, on the back, on the waist, receive your healing. You spirit of infirmity, come out in the name of Jesus. Number seven. Ah, something is happening now. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. Ah, yada, da, bo, shada, da, yada. Hebrews 9, 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Yes, go to the next one. How much more? Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Lift up your hand. You are going to pray. 
in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus Christ I receive spiritual strength to be spiritually alive to be fruitful to be productive and to be effective I receive power for my spiritual man for my spiritual assignment by the blood of Jesus no altar will destroy me all ye gifts my spiritual gifts I command you now come alive come alive come alive in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray I receive my spiritual life I receive my prayer life my evangelistic life working of miracles I receive it back I receive it back righteousness is working in me open your mouth and pray by the blood I am clean I am clean I am strengthened by the blood I recharge my spiritual battery I cannot run down open your mouth and pray Jesus there is power in this house Jesus just two more just two more just two more number eight Revelations chapter 12 verse 11 Revelations chapter 12 verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death can you lift up your hand and declare by the blood of Jesus Christ which I will drink tonight I declare I am an overcomer no challenge no battle no problem can bring me down all my battles I declare they are won by the blood by the blood by the blood open your mouth and begin to pray I cannot go down by the blood no battle can bring me down nothing no challenge can bring me down sickness cannot bring me down accident cannot bring me down disappointment cannot bring me down betrayer cannot bring me down I am an overcomer hey yes sir I hear you hey Jesus something is happening here something is happening here the blood 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 hey in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus finally Hebrews chapter 11 verse 28 Hebrews chapter 11 verse 28 through faith the blood you are going to drink tonight you will drink it by faith through faith he kept the Passover that is one and the sprinkling of blood these are two things one is the Passover the other one is the sprinkling every time something happens and you hear somebody shout the blood of Jesus he just sprinkled you're going to begin to learn to sprinkle 
you enter a car I sprinkle the blood of Jesus that simple statement has ensured that car if anybody was programmed to die by accident because you entered it is overruled by the sprinkling of blood lest that destroyer of the firstborn should touch them that's why tonight we are going to drink it and you're going to take a bath and sprinkle you will take to your office you will take to your house you will take to you i told you to come with some you may need to send some to village you may need to send some to your land just go there sprinkle it out if you're watching by television you don't just go and buy something and do it you must take it to a priest who will consecrate it it is the power given to a priest to turn it from wine to blood just like he turns the olive oil to anointing oil a priest has to do that but let's take this last prayer point and it, it said the destroyer will not touch you now lift up your hand. I want you to know that as you are praying this prayer, you are representing every member of your family. It's not just about you. So you are going to hear that your brother escaped an accident or escaped something. He will not know where he's coming from, but he will know where he's coming from. This is the juju we are doing here now. Lift up that hand and declare. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I declare on behalf of my family, I am untouchable. I am a carrier of grace. There is no violence within my borders. I am successful. I cannot fail. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Prophesy. Prophesy to yourself. Prophesy. Prophesy. Jesus. Adedabodera. Adedabodera. In the name of Jesus. What a powerful service. Just by the blood, you can be delivered. The blood has been shed for us. The blood is still speaking. Your blood cannot go down because his blood has already gone down. That is the victory that we have. No man can touch your blood again because he has dropped his own blood on the line. His blood is an atonement for us. Gather your people, listen to this message over and over and over again. Keep sharing it with your friends. Give it to your neighbors. Gather people in your house. Gather your household. There is no powerful family liberation bigger than this one that you have just heard. This prayer works. The blood is speaking. Do it one more time. Get the blood. Get the wine. Non-alcoholic wine. And give it to a good man of God. Don't give it to any of these uh, youth copper prophets. Give it to a man of God that is true, that knows what he is doing. Let it be consecrated as the blood. And then share it in your house. I wait to hear your testimony. You can do fasting for several days. And take this communion every night. Go on with this prayer. It will shock you the result that you will get. The Phone numbers are on the screen. Our address, the email. We want to hear from you. We want to get your testimonies. Call and share your testimonies or write us. If you need counseling, call the numbers. You will get the counsel and direction that you need and we'll pray for you. I am waiting to hear from you about what God has done through this message. Look for other messages that I preached. They will be a blessing to you. I encourage you to get them. 
God is on your side. The blood is still speaking. The blood is against the devil and he cannot resist it. I wait to hear from you. My name is Pastor Don Odunze Jr. God bless you.